Hey, my name's Justin, and this is The Art of Repair, and today we're going to talk about operational voltages. All right, operational voltages, yeah, what are those? Well, an operational voltage is the voltage necessary for a device to perform smoothly. Okay, now that last bit there where I said smoothly, that is very important because you can definitely operate a device at a lower voltage and it might not run smoothly. Okay, so the key here is smoothly for operating voltage. Okay, now with that being said, first off, we gotta be able to find the operating voltage. So how do we find the operating voltage of a device, okay? Well, all you gotta do generally is just look at the battery, okay? Just take a look at the battery. If it's a Samsung, if it's an LG, if it's an HTC, if it's an Apple, it doesn't matter. It's pretty much on the battery, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at the battery on an iPhone SE and an iPhone 7, and let's look at the difference, and let's see if we can find the operating voltage. All right, let's see here. We have an iPhone SE down here, yay. And this is the battery. And look at that. We see a voltage. We see 3.82 volts. That would be the operating voltage of the iPhone SE. Now that was really easy to find. It can't be that easy all the time, can it? Absolutely it can. Check this out. We're going to go ahead and do an iPhone 7 now. Well, all I had to do was lay it down. Look at that. Operating voltage, 3.80 volts. And you know what? Just for funsies, let's go ahead and do a third-party 6S Plus battery. This one's got to be hard, right? This one's got to be one that's going to be tricky, right? Mm, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Ah, look at that. Even on the crappy knockoff batteries, we still have operational voltage, 3.80 volts, okay? So with that being said, finding the operational voltage is not really a problem. Um, you can generally find it, like I said, on the battery or uh, in general documentation. Now, the next part is what do we do with the operational voltage? Uh, we can actually use the operational voltage with our DC power supply to turn the device on, and at that point, you don't even need the battery. You can diagnose and you can work on your phones with your DC power supply, and now you know how to set your power supply to be able to turn it on, okay? So let's go ahead and jump over here and take a look at my power supply. Let's see if we can get this out of the way without causing a mess. Ooh, that's close. That's super close. Let me just take those off. All right, so back here, I've got a DC power supply. This is a fairly cheap one. It's 18 volts at three amps, I believe. So, you know, nothing major here, but I've had it for years and it pretty much works for all I really need it to work for. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Um, and something very important to pay attention to, uh, especially with electrical theory, is a device will only pull the amount of current that it needs. That's down here. Okay, this is your current. This is your amperage. This is the amount of amps being pulled into the device. Okay, so if a device will only pull what it needs, then you don't really need to worry about that outside of a diagnostic situation. Okay, you can use this right here to be able to figure out what's wrong, sort of, but at the same time, don't concern yourself too much with that in terms of like just turning the device on. Okay, we're paying attention to this up here. This is the actual voltage. Okay. Now, earlier in the video, I went to the iPhone SE and I checked the operating voltage. It was 3.82 volts, okay? So we're sitting here on 3.0 right now. Hmm, will it turn the device on? Hmm, maybe. Will it work? Probably not that well. So let's go ahead and take uh, one of my little power leads here. Um, you can get these, uh, I believe they should be down in the description. I'll post a link for them. They are specifically for Apple products. Um, they are just DC power supply leads. So I'm gonna take the one that's gonna work for this, and we're gonna plug it on into the battery terminal here. We do not have the battery plugged in right now. And you can see right now I'm at three volts. So let's just try and turn it on. Let's see what happens. Now, you can watch down here about the current being pulled in. Okay, so we got three volts, no current. Let's go ahead and try and pull it on. I 
mean, I don't see anything on the screen. It pulled a little bit of current, but it just wasn't enough. It just wasn't enough to get this device on. Let's try again. We're at three volts. Let's go ahead and turn it up a little bit. We're gonna go right up to the right operating voltage. So that's 3.8 volts. And I have a sneaky suspicion that this thing might turn on this time. Okay, we tried it at three volts. Now we're trying at 3.8. Okay, let's see if we can do this. Oh, look at the current. Well, how about them apples? We've got a booting device. So, now, the device is booting up. Everything seems to be working. You can actually see the current running right here. And yeah, I mean, the device is on. We're good to go. We are using the correct operational voltage to turn the device on. So, at this point, you know, once it's on, you'll be able to do any kind of testing you need, anything like that, and you don't even have to worry about the battery. So, if you've got like a situation where the battery is water damaged or something like that, and you wanna be able to power the device on safely, then you can use your DC power supply with these leads with the correct operating voltage to boot the device up, okay? Now, another thing we need to go over really quickly here about voltage, um, too little, it's just not gonna work. The right amount, you're gonna be good to go. Too much, and you're gonna destroy the device. So, I hope you're paying attention if you jack this thing up and you plug it into this bad boy and you turn it on, you may just not have a device left. So make sure you remember that, okay? Um, but yeah. So hey, I really hope you learned something today. In fact, if you uh, liked the video, go and hit right over down there and hit the like button. And if you're not already subscribed and you want to start checking out all my stuff weekly, just head on over to the other side and hit subscribe. Now. If you are super about it and you want to learn everything that I'm trying to teach, whoop, boom, hit that notification bell, all right? It's really important. That way, every single time I upload something, it pops up right on your phone, your computer, whatever you're doing, all right? And hey, check it out. Maybe you have an opinion about what I'm doing right now. Or maybe you even used my technique on a repair and it worked for you. If any of these things apply to you or maybe you just want to say hi, hit me up with a comment. I love them. Seriously. I love the comments. They're my favorite. Every time I get one on my phone, I'm like, oh yeah. And if you are one of those people that is about to look me up on Instagram um, to ask me what equipment I use, well, guess what? I already got you. Don't even worry about it. Hit the description. Boom. Right down at the bottom has everything in a big old list. If there's something that I didn't put on there, then hit me up on Instagram, the phone god. Check out my stuff. Then hit me up and let me know what you need. And don't forget, I'm Justin, and this is The Art of Repair.